When people talk about the best wrestlers, they are usually talking about certain aspects that are important to them. Someone who enjoys technical wrestling will see people like Konami or Zack Sabre Jr. as some of the best in the world. Someone who loves high flying would most likely look towards the lucha style. For this video, I will be picking who I believe the top 10 wrestlers of stardom are. I'm going to be judging them on an overall. What I mean by this is that I'm not just judging them on their wrestling ability or promos, but everything. This is going to be the top 10 overall wrestlers. So buckle in and try not to be too upset if your favorite wrestler didn't make the list. First I'll explain the 5 elements I use to determine a wrestler's overall rating. Then I will show you the top 10. Wrestling Ability Self-explanatory, this stat is a wrestler's ability in the ring. There is more than skill though. I'm also factoring in consistency. This one is going to be very subjective because to me, someone with great technical ability like Konami wouldn't necessarily have a huge advantage over someone like Momo, who was able to pull off consistent greatness and big matches. This whole category will be a combination of technical, power, speed and agility, flashiness, smoothness, and striking. As the title insinuates, these all have no advantage over each other. Someone with a different score in one category will be considered the same as someone with a perfect score in a different category. Charisma Charisma is one of the things that is arguably the most important thing about a wrestler. To some, it can make or break a person's ability to succeed. They could be one of the best physical athletes in the world, but if they can't connect with anybody, then they fall away. The way I am defining charisma is the wrestler's ability to shine through promos, facial expressions, body language, and appearance. For some, the next category, presence, would fall into charisma, but for me, it doesn't. I'll go more into that in the next category, though. Also, don't get this confused with the last category either. Storytelling is more than just charisma, in my opinion. When you think of charismatic wrestlers, some come to mind. Jeff Hardy, The Miz. They're both great examples from both sides. They can draw you in and keep you there. Then you have people like Ricochet, who is seriously lacking in any kind of personality, so you find it hard to connect with them. The best stardom example I can give right now is that Samire is a charisma machine. She can perfectly turn any situation into an entertaining time. Charisma will be broken down into promos, facial expressions, body language, and appearance. Presence I could have easily put this in charisma and had been done with it, but I do feel like it would be a wrong thing to do to not have its own category. Presence is more than just charisma, it's an aura. This is going to be the most debated of the stats most likely. What someone determines is a good presence or not is going to change person to person. Of course, this is my opinion, so most likely some of you will think otherwise. If it helps you understand exactly what I am talking about here, I could describe it as the it factor. That undefinable term that people use when they can't pinpoint exactly why a wrestler is so over. Unlike the first two stats so far, this one isn't going to include parts. This will be a singular value, unlike the rest of the stats. You either have presence or you don't. Bumping and selling. Without this, there is no way for a match to be great. I genuinely believe that. Bumping and selling is one of the most important parts of a wrestling match. A move can go anywhere from lame to devastating, just based on how the opponent sells it or bumps. An amazing bumper or seller is someone who can make any move look great. There is a reason that moves look better on Mayu Iwatani than Anatsuko Toro, for example. Most of the older wrestlers in stardom are, at the very least, good at this stat. This will be broken up into these separate parts. Bump intensity, bump complexity, and selling authenticity. Bump intensity is determined by how hard or impactful the bump on average for that wrestler is. For example, Azumi is known for practically throwing herself through the mat on her bumps, while Leo is a very soft bumper. Bump complexity is for those crazy bumps that make the move that much more impressive. For example, compare how Mayu and Kagetsu take clotheslines compared to Hanakamura. Selling authenticity is of course how good they are at selling. Are they consistent? Do they make you believe that a certain part of their body is hurt or in pain? After the bump, do they do anything special to make it seem like it affected them? Best examples would be Mayu Iwatani acting loopy or out of it after a big move, compared to Natsuko Tora who never seems to be all too affected on average. This one is going to be another subjective one because, to some, an overseller like Dolph Ziggler is great, where some see it as ruining the match. Remember, this is my own ratings, I put a lot of thought into this. Storytelling Storytelling is a term that is used for a lot of different things in the wrestling fanbase. 
Some use it to describe any match with some ring psychology, and some use it only for matches that were good between two people who were feuding. To me, storytelling in wrestling is a mixture of three separate elements. There is in-ring storytelling, where the wrestler using actions, body language, and facial expressions are able to tell a silent story. The best example would be Tam vs. Arisa for the Wonder of Stardom title. Watching that match, I dare someone to deny they told a story. The next element would be plot lines, a wrestler's ability to properly play out the plot of whatever storyline they are part of. Whether it's Tam's protection of stars or Momo's rise to the top. Just for clarification, this does not include rivalries. This includes the wrestler's base abilities of helping a story seem more important. The last part is rivalry storytelling. I will be judging the wrestler's ability to amplify a rivalry from some throwaway event to a memorable moment in time. An example of Tam and Arisa would be the absolute best, while Hana against Kagetsu would be an example of a rivalry that fell flat. Now that you know the different elements, I will now get to the top 10 part of the video. I went and gave values to every element I mentioned, to every single stardom signed wrestler. In this video I will only be talking about the top 10, I'll probably make a second video where I will cover the rest of the roster, but just not as much detail. Number 10 Starlight Kid comes in at number 10, just barely making it in. Her total score was 107 out of 170. As you can see, she did pretty decently in the overall status. For wrestling ability, she scored 4 in technical, 2 in power, 7 in speed, 8 in flashiness, 6 in smoothness, and 3 in striking. While Starlight Kid is known for her speed and agility, her almost hesitant feel sometimes in the ring and her sloppiness of the 619 lowered her smoothness score. Her small frame and weak hits resulted in low scores for power and striking. While she can do some technical wrestling, most of her ability is in the lucha type style of wrestling, resulting in high points in speed and flashiness. Charisma is where Starlight Kid really shines. For promos, she scored 7, 6 in facial expressions, 9 in body language, and 10 in appearance. You might be wondering how a masked wrestler has scored so high in facial expressions. Well, from the little of her face we do see, she really shows her feelings. Her smiles and scowls reach the audience very well. Her being a masked wrestler, her need for body language is more important than anyone else in the promotion. She has done a great job portraying herself just through the movements of the body. She scored a 7 in promos because she doesn't really stand out too much as of right now in the way she delivers on the mic, but her willingness to take lead and be the mouthpiece earned her more points. Her total score for Charisma is 32 out of 40. While she has some things to work on still, she could very well never progress in this category and still be better than a lot of the others 10 years from now. For presence, Starlight Kid might have scored lower than some of you thought she would. I am always talking about how awesome her appearance is. Well, presence isn't just appearance. While Starlight looks cool, there isn't ever a time where just her appearance alone dominates the area. That's why I gave her a 6 out of 10. She just isn't there yet when it comes to this. Starlight Kid is a phenomenal bumper. While she may not be as intense as some, her unique way of throwing her body around is a sight to see. For bumping and selling, she scored 9 in bump intensity, 8 in bump complexity, and 5 in selling authenticity. The way Starlight Kid ragdolls after big hits is one of the most entertaining things in stardom. If you haven't noticed before, watch Starlight's legs when she's bumping. She basically ragdolls and let her legs flop around, and it makes the move look that much more devastating because of all of the chaotic movements. While she is a great bumper, her selling could use some work. Right now I gave her a 5, as she is average in her ability to sell during a match. I think this is purely experience related, and she will just keep improving as she wrestles more. This is where Starlight Kid really started hurting. Storytelling is not her strong point, and that could very well not be her fault. Unlike others, Starlight Kid is rarely in rivalries or storylines. She has had very little opportunity to show off what she could do. For storytelling, she scored a 6 on in-ring storytelling, 5 in plot lines, and 6 in rivalries. She has a lot to work on. With time, I believe she will be killing it in this category, though. Number 8. Surprisingly, there are actually two separate ties in this list, and this is the first one. Number 8 is a tie between Arisa Hoshiki and Momo Watanabe, at a total of 114 points out of 170. 
Let's start with Orisa, then talk about Momo after. For wrestling ability, Orisa scored 3 in technical, 3 in power, 6 in speed, 6 in flashiness, 6 in smoothness, and 10 in striking. Orisa is arguably the best striker in stardom, if not Joshi, so giving her a perfect score in striking was a no-brainer. While Orisa is very quick in short spurts, I feel her overall speed and agility is not something that great, so because of her explosiveness, I gave her a 6 instead of 5. She is not a technical wrestler and does very little requiring power. While her kicks are impressive, they aren't exactly flashy looking, but she is one of the more flashy of the strikers. Her total score of the wrestling ability is 34 out of 60. Arisa absolutely killed it when it comes to charisma, which should be of no surprise to people. From day one of her return, she was a charisma machine. She scored 6 in promos, 10 in facial expressions, 8 in body language, and 8 in appearance. Her facial expressions are always on point, and she clearly shows what she is feeling and is able to add whole levels to a scene with no words. She is a great physical actress. Her only weakness is her ability to talk, which is good, but nothing too special. From the very beginning, you guys know I have always been a fan of Orisa's appearance. She is incredibly cute, and she wears yellow. Her outfits are really stylish, and her hairstyle really fits her. I feel like her outfit could use some work, and that's one of the main reasons she lost some points in appearance. Her final score for Charisma is 32 out of 40. Arisa doesn't have anything special when it comes to presence. That's why she only scored a 6 in it. While her appearance in Charisma is great, I don't feel anything too special from her in most situations. It might just be her small time in stardom that her mystique doesn't match what I believe it could be. Arisa is a very average bumper. While there is nothing particularly wrong about her bumping and selling, there isn't anything special about it either. I believe in a year or two she will be much better at this than she is now. In bumping and selling, she scored 7 in bump intensity, 6 in bump complexity, and 6 in selling authenticity. Her total score is 19 out of 30 points. During her short time in stardom, Arisa has absolutely killed it in the storytelling abilities. Her entire interactions with Tam, her quest for the white belt, and her rivalry with Hazuki. Arisa is in no way lacking when it comes to storytelling. She scored an 8 on in-ring storytelling, 6 in plot lines, and 9 in rivalries. She has had some of the best rivalries this year, putting on amazing matches after long build-ups. The only reason she scored 6 in plot lines is because, like most STARS members, they aren't a part of many storylines. She doesn't add too much to any storyline going on involving stars either. While some call her inconsistent in the ring, and they wouldn't be wrong, when Arisa is on point, she is one of the greats. Her matches all seem to be telling a story in the ring, and she is one of the few who can really bring a tear-inducing moment to us. Her total score is 23 out of 30 points. Moving on to Momo Watanabe. Some might be surprised that Momo is not only so low on the list, but also tied with Arisa Hoshiki. Well, I was surprised too. When rating everyone, I didn't compare and make sure some people were higher than others. I just sat down and seriously thought about what number each person would get in each category. I didn't compare them to others, but just themselves and the number that came to my brain. Just going from gut instinct, Momo would be much higher, most likely either number 5 or 6. Unfortunately, when I decided to put numbers to it, the outcome did not match how I personally felt from my heart. In wrestling ability, she scored 5 in technical, 5 in power, 3 in speed, 4 in flashiness, 5 in smoothness, and 10 in striking. Before you hit the dislike button, remember Momo Watanabe is my favorite wrestler. Not just in Joshi, but out of everyone. She is my number one, but I had to really think about it and why Momo is so great isn't her wrestling ability. Right now, she is about average or above average in everything besides striking. There is nothing wrong with that. It's actually incredible that she got a perfect score in one category at the age of 19. She has a lot of time to improve, and honestly, I think she will. Momo is purely striking and big moves. What makes her great is how she uses those. Her total score is 32 out of 60. Momo is not that charismatic. She is about average in my opinion, but seriously lacking in a lot of elements. Charisma is not what makes Momo so great either, but just an addition to her awesome persona. She scored 6 in promos, 7 in facial expressions, 5 in body language, and 9 in appearance. 
Momo has a star appearance, her outfits, her hair, her beauty, and her strong body. She is a superstar in every instance when it's purely looks-wise. The problem is she is lacking in the other elements. She tries to hide it, but sometimes you can still see the nervous teenage girl Momo shine through when she is trying to be tough or hurtful to her opponents. She has her moments on the mic, but they are far and few between, as she falls flat on the mic a lot. She is getting better, and I believe with time she will be a master. The one thing she is really good at, though, is her ability to look really happy when taunting her failed opponent. Her total score for charisma is 27 out of 40. Presence. This is where Momo really shines. She is stardom's ace, and she feels like it. When she is in the ring, you see her, and you know. You get told she is the ace, that she is on top, and you believe it. For some reason, despite her flaws, you believe it. That's why I gave her a 10, a perfect score. Momo is decent at bumping and selling. Better at the selling part than the bumping part though. She will always make sure her opponent looks good and never tries to cheapen her opponents. She could really use some work though. She scored a 6 in bump intensity, 4 in bump complexity, and 8 in selling authenticity. She isn't known for her complex bumps or them being that hard, but she will sell with the best of them. Her total score for bumping and selling is 18 out of 30. Momo is a storytelling machine. If you could see a pattern here, Momo is a good wrestler that is really great at the rest of the business. Her ability to amplify any story or feud she is in to higher heights is something special. There is a reason she is so amazing at big matches. You get invested quickly and rejoice when she succeeds. She scores 9 on in-ring storytelling, 8 in plot lines, and 10 in rivalries. Anytime Momo is involved in a storyline, you know it's going to be good. Her total score was 27 out of 34 storytelling. Number 7. Jungle Kiona deserves to be in the top 10. You don't know how happy I am that she is on this list. Like I said, I didn't plan out anything in advance and did everything separately, so even though I consider her amazing, that doesn't mean it will come out that way. Jungle is a special person in stardom. She is the eternal underdog. No matter how many times she gets knocked down, she always gets back up. Jungle Kiona gets 117 out of 170 points. In wrestling ability, Jungle Kiona scored 4 in technical, 10 in power, 3 in speed, 4 in flashiness, 5 in smoothness, and 5 in striking. Jungle is a great wrestler, and one of the best power wrestlers in Joshi. She just isn't more than a power wrestler, and that isn't a negative thing. Stardom wrestlers are specialists, people who are really great at one style of wrestling. That is not uncommon across the wrestling world. No one in the world would score higher than a 50 in my opinion. One of the ways this rating system is stacked against Jungle is that power wrestling, by its very nature, is not smooth or flashy. She was never going to get a super great score in this category. Her total wrestling ability score is 31 points out of 60. If you are upset the system is stacked against Jungle, then get ready for some good news. The next category, Charisma, Jungle absolutely kills it. She is absolutely inspiring when it comes to this. Think about it. She somehow loses every important match she's a part of, and yet still has people supporting her in everything she does. She's just amazing. In Charisma, she scored 10 in promos, 10 in facial expressions, 9 in body language, and 7 in appearance. She is god tier when it comes to portraying emotions in the ring. Every match, every title shot is pure emotion. You connect with her because she is so good at showing you how she is feeling at that moment that you feel her struggle. Her struggle isn't just hers, she makes us want to lift her up too, to support her. She scored a 27 out of 30 in Charisma, to no surprise. Unfortunately, Jungle does struggle when it comes to presence. This might seem contradictory because of what was just said, but there is a reason why she isn't the star of stardom. She isn't enough to carry the promotion or match to greatness alone. She works best with someone else. That's why she only gets a 6 out of 10 for presence. One of Jungle's biggest weaknesses is her bumping. While she is a phenomenal seller, one of the best, her bumping is not memorable. I believe she could improve on this, but in all honesty, I don't want her to. I am fine with her not doing crazy or intense bumps. She isn't exactly young in Joshi terms, and I want her around as long as we can get her. If that means subpar bumps, then I am perfectly okay with it. 
She scored 4 in Bump Intensity, 3 in Bump Complexity, and 9 in Selling Authenticity, for a total of 16 out of 30 points. Up till now, Jungle has either killed a category or fell short. Well, this one is no different. She absolutely shines when it comes to storytelling. Whether it be in the ring or out, she really shines. She is able to always do her part in the storyline perfectly. Her feud with Natsuko has been nothing short of tragic in the best way. Her chase for a singles belt has been absolutely heartbreaking with every single loss. No one makes you back them more than Jungle Kiona. In storytelling, Jungle Kiona scored an 8 on in-ring storytelling, 10 in plot lines, and 10 in rivalries for a total of 28 out of 30 points. Number 6. Hazuki comes in 6th place on this list, which wasn't that surprising. When I was coming up with the top 5 originally before I was putting numbers to everything, I thought 5th place would go to one of 3 people. One was Momo, the other was Hazuki. Hazuki, as we all know her, is a phenomenal wrestler, and at the young age of 20 years old, she has a very bright future ahead of her, and she will only progress from here. In wrestling ability, Hazuki scored 5 in technical, 6 in power, 10 in speed, 5 in flashiness, 7 in smoothness, and 7 in striking for a total of 40 out of 60 points. Hazuki is one of the few high-speed wrestlers in the promotion currently. The reason I say one of the few is because the others are all underage practically, so she doesn't have any real competition in terms of card placement. Hazuki has completely revamped herself over the last year. During her Queen's Quest days, she was clearly working on an average junior wrestling style. Think Mayu, Io, Kairi, and whatnot. Sometime over the last year, she shifted into one of the best high-speed wrestlers in the world. Being insanely quick in the ring, she still has a lot to learn so her smoothness isn't that high, but even though it's a little low, the fact that she can achieve that smoothness level while having a 10 in speed is mind-blowing to me. In Charisma, Hazuki scored 6 in promos, 7 in facial expressions, 8 in body language, and 7 in appearance for a total of 28 out of 40 points. Charisma is one of the few things stopping Hazuki from being a top star right now. I'm not worried though, as those scores only a year ago would have been much worse. Her time in Ototai has helped her get out of her shell and develop an interesting persona. The only thing she is slightly lacking on would be promos, as a lot of the time she feels unnatural when speaking, like she is acting instead of being the character. With how much she has progressed the last two years, I have no doubt that she will get there eventually. In presence, Hazuki scored a 4 out of 10. My reasoning for such a low score is that she doesn't really stand out much. While she is one of the more attractive members of Stardom, her aura feels bland and uninspired. This might be the result of being in Ototai and being overshadowed by such strong presence, but it's been the same her entire career. I don't know if this will ever change for her, but for right now, she is still lacking. In Bumping and Selling, Hazuki scored 9 in Bump Intensity, 9 in Bump Complexity, and 8 in Selling Authenticity for a total of 26 out of 30 points. For all of her faults, Hazuki is really great at bumping and selling, one of the best in stardom currently. Whenever Hazuki is taking a bump during the match, you can expect that to be hard hitting and pretty complex for the most part. It's clear that while training for her current high speed style, that she studied how to take bumps to the extreme. In storytelling, Hazuki scored 6 on in-ring storytelling, 7 in plot lines, and 9 in rivalries for a total of 22 out of 30 points. Hazuki is really good during any storylines or rivalries she holds, able to help elevate any of them to higher heights. She can usually add some flair to whatever is going on at the time. Her feuds with Momo and Orisa have been really great, both feeling very intense and fun to watch. Number 5 Finally in the top 5, and for number 5 we have Andres Miyagi, with a total of 127 out of 170 points. It's no secret that I am a fan of Miyagi, and that I believe she is one of the best signees of the last year. She is a superstar. Everything about her is just pure raw talent. She's pretty new when it comes to stardom, so the amount of time I've seen her is really limited. She was one of the hardest people to rate, but I am happy with her placement. Miyagi is the third person I was considering for number 5 when I was coming up with the original list. In wrestling ability, she scored 5 in technical, 10 in power, 7 in speed, 6 in flashiness, 8 in smoothness, and 6 in striking for a total of 42 out of 60 points. Miyagi is an interesting wrestler. 
For as big and powerful as she is, she is also surprisingly speedy. There are many times in her matches where you see her moving around the ring like someone half her size. I jokingly call her the female Brock Lesnar because her size does not match her explosive speed and agility. The only weak side to Miyagi, in my opinion, is that her striking ability seems pretty weak in compared to everything else she does. Her forearm hits look very soft, and it's made even more evident in Stardom, where everyone is usually pretty stiff. In Charisma, Andres Miyagi scored 10 in promos, 10 in facial expressions, 10 in body language, and 10 in appearance for a total of 40 out of 40 points. Miyagi is so entertaining in pretty much anything she does. She absolutely oozes charisma. Being able to turn any situation into a comedic moment or making moments seem more intense or awesome. She is one of the few people in the wrestling world that in my opinion is perfect when it comes to charisma. She is a superstar and she will be one of the biggest stars in the world 5 years from now. Miyagi scored a 10 out of 10 in presence, which shouldn't be surprising to anybody at this point. She has the it factor. Miyagi radiates star quality, everything about her is perfect for wrestling. One day she is going to be a top star in stardom if she sticks around. For bumping and selling, Miyagi scored a 6 in bump intensity, 4 in bump complexity, and 5 in selling authenticity for a total of 15 out of 30 points. One of her weaker points is her ability to bump and sell. She isn't bad, but she isn't good either. She is pretty middle of the road here. She doesn't really go above and beyond to make most moves look like they really sting, and for the most part it isn't that much of a problem. She still bumps and sells for everyone, and there isn't really a problem with the fact that it's not that impressive. In storytelling, Miyagi scored 8 on in-ring storytelling, 6 in plot lines, and 7 in rivalries for a total of 20 out of 30. There isn't much to say here, since she hasn't been around a long time. These scores were purely gut feelings. Based on how good she is at different elements like presence charisma, I could safely assume that she would be pretty great or at least average at the storytelling elements of wrestling as well. Number 4. When this list was still in infancy, the top 4 I was sure of. After doing all of this, it turns out that the top 4 is the same as how I had chosen without the numerical values. Number 4 is none other than Azumi herself. She scored a total of 129 out of 170 points. Azumi is crazy. She is only 16 and one of the best overall wrestlers in the promotion. Her abilities in and out of the ring is just mind-blowing for her age, and honestly, even if she wasn't that age, it would still be impressive. There are very few weak points of Azumi right now. I regularly say the worst part about her is that she is only 16. In wrestling ability, she scored 6 in technical, 2 in power, 9 in speed, 7 in flashiness, 8 in smoothness, and 7 in striking for a total of 39 out of 60 points. Azumi is a marvel in the ring, regularly out-wrestling women who are 10 years older than her. She is known for her quick and agile style, while also implementing some technical elements and strikes. She is going the junior route from what I can tell. Her only weakness is her power, and that is primarily since she is one of the smaller people on the roster. The fact that she loves high-speed wrestling as well makes it even less important to have power. I do not believe she has reached her peak in terms of wrestling ability yet. I think she is going to just get better and better as time goes on. In Charisma, Azumi scored 9 in promos. 9 in facial expressions, 8 in body language, and 9 in appearance for a total of 35 out of 40 points. Azumi has always been charismatic. From her early days, she had a character and she was good at it. She was always a very disrespectful little brat and we all loved her for it. From her days running Azumi's army to current day being the non-leader leader of Queen's Quest, she has absolutely killed it in this department. The only thing that kept her from getting better marks is that there are some times that her being a teenage girl is obvious. What I mean by that is sometimes you can kind of see a nervousness or self-consciousness feeling from her sometimes. It's nothing too important, that's why it's only affected her a little bit. In presence, Azumi scored a 7 out of 10, because while she has a great aura, it's hard not to see a 16-year-old girl because of her smaller frame. I think unlike most people in this roster, she has the potential to increase this stat. Usually in my opinion, presence is not something that can be changed too drastically, but some people have the ability to do that. I think Izumi is one of those people. 5 years from now, I would not be surprised if she got a 10 out of 10. In bumping and selling, Izumi scored 10 in bump intensity, 8 in bump complexity, and 7 in selling authenticity for a total of 25 out of 30 points. 
She is a bumping machine, and one of the best bumpers in the promotion. Within the last year, Azumi has really stepped it up in this category. She went from average to trying to throw herself through the mat with every bump. She does neck bumps as well, which are just insane. She is definitely in the top 5 best bumpers in stardom. The thing she could really work on is her selling though. While it's really great, there are some consistency issues here and there. In my opinion, she could not improve in the slightest and still be perfectly fine. In storytelling, Azumi scored a 7 on in-ring storytelling, 8 in plot lines, and 9 in rivalries for a total of 23 out of 30 points. Azumi knows how to improve a scenario. Out of all of the younger girls, she is the only one reliably in a bunch of rivalries and storylines. She was a part of every single Queen's Quest vs. Odotai feud. She has rivalries going with Starlight Kid and Samire. No matter her part in all of these, she always elevates the stakes or importance of the story to important. Number 3 Tam Nakano Surprised? Well, you shouldn't be. She is one of the most slept on wrestlers in the world right now. There isn't a single thing that she comes short on. She is one of the best wrestlers to wrestle in stardom, and I believe she deserves this spot. Tam Nakano was the person I chose for third before doing this, and I was happy to see her get the spot after all. She rounded out with a total of 148 out of 170 points. In wrestling ability, Tam scored 7 in technical, 5 in power, 6 in speed, 10 in flashiness, 9 in smoothness, and 10 in striking for a total of 47 out of 60 points. Tam is an incredible wrestler. When she first joined Stardom, she was pretty good. Very green, but lots of potential. She has been wrestling for a couple years now, and she has reached at least some of that potential. Tam is amazing at striking. With her martial arts background, her kicks are authentic and quick. She has pretty good speed, but nothing too special. She is a pretty talented technical wrestler, being able to easily pull off some impressive submissions. Really, there are few things more fun to watch than Tam in the ring. In Charisma... Tam scored 10 in promos, 10 in facial expressions, 10 in body language, and 10 in appearance, for a total of 40 out of 40 points. A perfect score. Tam Nakano is perfect in every instance of charisma. She is perfect. She is amazing on the mic, able to portray the complex feelings and themes of the story. She's able to show exactly how she feels with nothing more than a look and some body language. She has mastered portraying how she feels about people without saying a single word. Tam is also incredibly cute, like god-tier cuteness. She is an incredibly beautiful woman with a great fashion sense, so it was a no-brainer that she was getting a perfect score and appearance as well. While she does have a perfect appearance, her presence is somewhat lacking. She scored an 8 out of 10. I think this is the best this score is going to get for her though. Don't take this as a bad score though, this is an amazing score in my opinion, a score high enough to be on top. She just doesn't have the most overwhelming presence is all. In bumping and selling, Tam scored 7 in bump intensity, 6 in bump complexity, and 10 in selling authenticity for a total of 23 out of 30. While she isn't the greatest bumper in the promotion, she is really good, able to make moves and sequences look impactful and serious. What Tam really shines at though is her ability to sell. She is amazing at it, keeping a great consistency and logic to how she sells everything. If you watch her match against Arisa, there is some really advanced level of storytelling going on there. This isn't an inconsistent thing either. Every match has the same amount of passion and ability as the last. In storytelling, Tam scored 10 on in-ring storytelling, 10 in plot lines, and 10 in rivalries. A total of 30 out of 30 and the only one to get a perfect score in this category. Pick any storyline that Tam was involved in. Literally any plot or rivalry. It's one of the best things in stardom. Her feuds with Arisa and Natsuko, her obsessive protection of Mayu and Stars, her journey to win a title belt, everything she touches turns to gold. After seeing these scores, you can probably understand why I feel like Tam deserved the number 3 spot. She is the most underappreciated wrestler on the planet in my opinion. Number 1 Number one is actually a tie between two people, and you bet I was completely surprised when the numbers came out the same. Both these people achieved overall scores of 149 out of 170 points. It's crazy that this turned out exactly like how I originally thought it was going to turn out. Number one is a tie between Mayu Iwatani and Kagetsu. In wrestling ability, Kagetsu scored 10 in technical, 10 in power, 
8 in speed, 8 in flashiness, 7 in smoothness, and 6 in striking for a total of 49 out of 60 points. Kagetsu is a phenomenal wrestler, one of the best in the world, able to be great in pretty much every single wrestling category. Her only weaknesses are striking as her strikes tend to come off pretty weak and non-impactful most of the time. Her shoot kicks to the back are really nice, so that's why the score isn't that low. Her super kicks and forearms are lacking though. Kagetsu is amazing at the technical elements of wrestling, able to wrestle with the best of them and usually outshine them in that aspect. While she is a great technical wrestler, her power is not to be ignored. She is one of the most powerful women in stardom, if not the most powerful. Her feats of strength are awe-inspiring. In charisma, she scored 10 in promos, 10 in facial expressions, 10 in body language, and 9 in appearance for a total of 39 out of 40 points. She almost got a perfect score here, but I felt like her appearance, while awesome, was lacking in something that I couldn't quite put my finger on. So in the end, I went with my gut and gave her a 9 out of 10. Kagetsu doesn't really need an explanation. Watching one show where she is involved is enough to tell you that she oozes charisma in excess. She scored a 6 in presence, and the reason for this is because while she is charismatic, and she looks awesome, I feel like standing out and being the center of the attention is never her plan. When watching her interactions with other wrestlers, it always feels like she's purposely taking a back seat in the spotlight to allow the other younger girls to shine. While this score could be seen as a bad thing, the reason it's this low is because of how great of a senior in the company she is. In Bumping and Selling, Kagetsu scored an 8 in Bump Intensity, 10 in Bump Complexity, and 9 in Selling Authenticity for a total of 27 out of 30 points. Watching Kagetsu bump is always entertaining. She goes out of her way to make the move look absolutely insane. When Jungle Kiona goes to Clothesline her, Kagetsu does a complete flip. Kagetsu tries really hard to make her opponents look strong. She is also an adapter of the neck bump. Occasionally she will do a neck bump and it always seems super intense since one of her weak spots is her neck. In storytelling, Kagetsu gets 8 on in-ring storytelling, 10 in plot lines, and 10 in rivalries for a total of 28 out of 30 points. Kagetsu is a master of telling a story, making everything more important and fun than they could be without her. She has a way of adding slight comedy and importance to her feuds. If you look at all of the Odotai feuds, the outcome always has some kind of serious repercussion for losing, and it was always Kagetsu making these stipulations. While she is great at in-ring storytelling, I feel like she isn't perfect and could use some improvements. That's why I decided to give her an 8. Moving on to Mayu. Mayu is the other person tied for first place, and in wrestling ability she scored 8 in technical, 6 in power, 10 in speed, 9 in flashiness, 10 in smoothness, and 7 in striking for a total of 50 out of 60 points. Mayu is widely considered one of the best women wrestlers in the world. Being a part of Freedom made up of Io Shirai and Kairi Hojo and Mayu Iwatani. They all made a name for themselves and their abilities are almost unmatched. Everything Mayu does proves that she deserves that recognition. She always gives a 100%, almost never messes up, and regularly puts on one of the best performances of each show. The reason Mayu is not very well recognized as much as the other two in 3 is that she was overshadowed by Io Shirai in wrestling ability, and Kairi in charisma. It's a phenomenon that happens in competition or ability-based events. When someone is getting compared to literally the best in the world at something, sometimes they don't look as good. In Charisma, Mayu scored 10 in promos, 9 in facial expressions, 10 in body language, and 9 in appearance for a total of 38 out of 40 points. Some of you may be surprised or against my decision to give her a 10 in promos as she regularly messes up on the mic. I am convinced that it's all planned. While Mayu is a klutz and a bit of an airhead in real life, I believe the amount she shows in the ring and in promos is actually a huge exaggeration. It's a character she plays, and she plays it perfectly. There is only so many times she can say good evening when it's the afternoon before I start thinking that maybe she's doing it on purpose. For those that think she couldn't be pretending on the clumsiness, it's just too natural. Well, just look at her in the ring. She is more in control of her body and smooth in the ring than any other person in the entire promotion, if not the world. Every single thing she does in the ring is art. It's perfection. Why wouldn't she be able to translate that into tripping and almost falling over something for comedic effect? 
In bumping and selling, she scored 10 in bump intensity, 10 in bump complexity, and 10 in selling authenticity for a total of 30 out of 30 and the only perfect score in this category. A lot of what I say in this video is subjective, something that could be argued against and is just opinions. This is not. If you don't think Mayu is one of the best bumpers and sellers in the world, male or female, then you are clearly biased or don't know what you're talking about. Mayu is absolutely masterful when it comes to this category. Her bumps are hard and intense. She is a master of the neck bump to the point that people joke she has a rubber neck. The thing she does is absolutely mind-blowing. Her selling is untouched. Every person who gets a 10 in selling on this list is a lesser 10 than Mayu's 10. She transcends the scale in my opinion. In storytelling, Mayu scored a 9 on in-ring storytelling, 9 in plot lines, and 7 in rivalries for a total of 25 out of 30 points. There is a reason she is tied for the first spot, and this is a part of it. She is an amazing storyteller when it comes to in-ring activity and plot lines, but her one weakness, if you can even call it that, is her rivalries. Don't get me wrong, they are great, but they are usually amazing because of the other person while Mayu helps a little. Her two main rivalries in her career, Kagetsu and Io Shirai, are amazing. I feel like the reason they were elevated a lot though was because of the other person and not specifically Mayu. Don't take this as a bad thing though, a 7 is a great score and means she is very, very good at it. So there you go, the top 10 overall stardom wrestlers. When you just take one thing into account, then the lists would look pretty different. If you are talking about wrestling ability alone, Konami and Saki would be super high on the list, but when considering everything, Saki is actually pretty low overall. That's because wrestling is a combination of many different elements. You can't slack on certain things and just work on one thing. You could be one of the best wrestlers but have very little charisma like Konami. Or you could have amazing charisma and only be average at the wrestling part like Hanakamura. I wanted to make this list because I feel like when you consider every element in wrestling, some people are surprisingly higher or lower than others. The whole thing started because I have always been of the opinion that out of the Daughters of Stardom, Mayu was actually the best one overall. Io is better at the wrestling part and Kairi is almost untouched in charisma, but Mayu is not too far behind them in the things that they are good at, while Mayu is leagues ahead of them in the thing Mayu is the best at. Thank you for watching what I can only assume is an incredibly long video. I spent at least 6-10 to 10 hours on this video before writing the script and recording and editing the video because I made each one of those stat charts by hand in Photoshop and sat down and individually rated every single wrestler signed to stardom. Who do you think are the best overall wrestlers in stardom? Let me know in the comments. Goodbye.